YouTube, Jake Kilroy here, uh, back in the shop with a fun project. A um, while ago, just a while ago, maybe a year or two ago, I hired a gentleman to do some work on a uh, deck, on a building, on a two-story covered porch. And um, totally new handrails, columns, fixed a bunch, replaced a bunch of uh, flooring, you know, so... Anyway, the other day, um, you know, because of the heating and cooling and contraction of, of the wood over time, I was able to see a small gap between one of the handrails and one of the posts. What I realized was that the handrails were mounted with uh, finish nails. Um, no larger fasteners, no screws, um, no type of mortise and tenon, just finish nails. So I was really concerned that um, these things could loosen up, just make a lean on the hand round, just go right over the side, uh, you know, 25 feet to the ground or whatever, and um, really hurt themselves and I'd be responsible. So um, I want to try to reinforce this stuff without you know, completely disassembling the handrails. So, what I've decided to do is build what I refer to as a magnum-sized pocket drill jig. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with pocket drills. I got some pictures and stuff of some. Um, uh, show you what a, a pocket drill, uh, a pocket screw fastener looks like in use and show you what a pocket drill, a small pocket drill jig looks like, a kind of a commercially available one. And then, um, uh, so let's go through some of that and uh, then we'll start building um, our Magnum pocket drill jig uh, to reinforce this porch. I want to try to do this in as um, uh, unobtrusively, obviously, but I want it to be sturdy, most of all, and um, safe. So uh, let's get right to it. All right, so a pocket drill, pocket screw uses a pocket drill guide. This is a pocket drill guide right here. This is a Craig. This is very common. Um, and you see here this drill bushing. Here's the drill. So you got a piloted section. Then you have a, a section that accommodates the head of the screw put this down on a piece of wood that you want to drill you clamp this down you drill in from this angle here and it gives you a cut into this piece that looks very similar to this um, this here is the back of a china cabinet that I have stored here in the back of the shop and you'll see the screw head here and uh, the pocket that is drilled and the screw to attach this back to the side um, of the uh, back of this china cabinet so that this screw obviously doesn't protrude through or there's nothing no exposed fastener so you know what a pocket drill pocket drill jig is now <clears throat> except this pocket drill you say well why don't you just use this Kilroy this pocket drill jig and um, uses this screw right it's a little two and a half inch um, screw pocket screws have to have a flat bottom otherwise they'll pull through the board and they'll split your work uh, it's a square drive um, and that's good and it works and this is this is a useful system and and I've used it um, to make plenty of repairs it comes with this nice little collar here that you can put on the um, drill to set a stop, which is very nice. Um, but this isn't sufficient, I don't think, for what we're going to do. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build a pocket drill jig. For this, 
Um, this is a 5 16 by 4 inch Spax lag screw. They sell these at your various big box stores. Uh, nice piece, got a nice flat flange, got a hex drive, which is darn useful. And um, most importantly, it's got a real a rugged thread, real uh, high grip thread. Supposedly you don't have to pre-drill for, but you better. And um, it's got a nice four inch length, which will give me plenty of uh, grip length in the post. So this is what we're gonna do. This is the project. We're gonna build a, a drill guide for uh, this 560s leg. So we're gonna have to do a little work with the computer to do the CAD work to uh, draw up this part. We got a guide we can work with here. Um, an existing uh, Craig pocket drill guide. Um, why can't I just size this one up or you know make the um, make the hole bigger or whatever? One of the problems is um, you saw the way that pocket drills into the wood. Cat, stop. Um, since this screw is so much larger and uh, will be attaching with so much force, I want to move. Let's say this is my piece of wood. And this is normally how the drill guide is situated up against the end where you drill in. I want to move this whole thing back so that I have more meat between my screw head and the end of the board. So that uh, with a regular pocket drill guide like this, it's about three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm looking for about at least an inch and a quarter. Probably an inch and a quarter uh, would be sufficient okay guys here we are at the computer um, in a little solid works action we got us a block drawn out here and what I've done is I've gone ahead and drawn all the features the way this is gonna work and I have kind of drawn it in such a way that I can show you the order um, that we're going to uh, do our operations so that maybe it makes sense to you why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. So this is the full block that um, I am um, using here. This is about, what are my dimensions here? Um, two and three quarter by four inches uh, by uh, a little over an inch thick. It was an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth thick. Then, um, so we're, we're going to take a block. You could use any material for this here. You could, you could actually use wood for this if you wanted to. You could use plastic, you could use aluminum, you could still use whatever you want. Um, would work, a uh, good stiff plastic would work fine for this. Matter of fact, I might look around and see if I have any polyethylene big enough to do this in polyethylene and I'll do it. But, um, so here you go, you got your main block. Then uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a hole through it for the bushing hole. I'm gonna make the bushing out of some uh, three quarter inch stock. So uh, let's pull that down. Well, there's the bushing hole. Um, I've, I've left this surface here transparent so that you can see the hole passing through the block. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, that, that just looks like a hole. It uh, doesn't look like um, you're going to be doing any pocket drilling with that. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece here and we're going to cut away from it to make our, um, to make our, our pocket drill jig. So the first cut we're going to make is going to be along the bottom. This is going to define that uh, angle that we're going to drill against. And I'm going to use about 18 degrees here. Uh, most pocket drills are around 15 degrees. Um, I'm going to use about 18 degrees here. I've got a lot of stock to work with, um, and I want to keep this rather large 5 16 lag screw away from the edges to reduce my chances of splitting. So the first cut we're going to make here is going to be this cut here. Let me show you how that works. Um, I come in here and sketch out my cut. I define my distance from the end. This is an inch. Uh, there's going to be a bushing in here, so I, my, my distance is actually going to be a little less than an inch, but I mean a little more than an inch, 
but I've defined this distance here, I've defined my angle, I've drawn this polygon here, and I've made my cut. And that that defines our our angle, and there's our uh, looks like our pocket drill right there. Then what we're going to do is uh, we need to flatten this end off so it'll rest up against the stock. That's the end cut. I think there we go. Uh, once again, um, just draw you a perpendicular line and make that end cut. And then we don't really have to cut anything off of this top, but I want a flat surface that I can use to clamp. So we're going to do the top cut here. And again, um, look at, make this angle the same so that these two edges are parallel and make a cut. What I'll probably do is I'll probably just rough these cuts out on the bandsaw and then we'll uh, leave a little material, we'll stick them back in the mill and we'll smooth them out nicely um, to give us a nice um, uh, smooth clean surface. So that is kind of the, you can see the uh, here where I've left the surface transparent, you can see the hole. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to create an assembly with this um, uh, we're going to create an assembly with this block and a tube for the bushing and you'll see uh, how they'll go together. Alright, so here's our part. The way we go about making an assembly out of this is um, we go up here and say uh, file uh, make assembly from part. Boom. We drop our part out here. Here's our jig body. Uh, then what we do is we go in here and say um, uh, insert component. Here's a tube for the bushing. And then we're going to need to mate these two parts. There we go. Let's see. There we go. So there we go. So we can differentiate. So how do we mate these up? So mate first thing I want to do is I want to make this with this. Oops, that was tough. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, then um, then uh, do I want this face to be flush? So I can come in here and grab this face here. Grab this face here. Oops, there you go. That's, that's pretty easy. Alright, so much for the CAD work. One change on the CAD work that's not shown on the video is that I decided to make the jig double wide uh, because I'm going to drill two holes. I'm going to put two screws on each side and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and just put two bushings in. That way I can just clamp once, drill, drill, and speed the process up. So I'm using a slightly larger, slightly thicker block of material. Uh, the rough block I need to come up with is three and a half by four by three. This block right here is three by 3.75. I mean, uh, yeah, three and three quarter by three by whatever length I need. This will be my four inch dimension here. So we're going to go to the bandsaw and we're going to go ahead and rough this out. All right, we're um, over at the bandsaw. We got ourselves set up for uh, oh, long speed. Okay, fellas, we got our block cut right here, roughed out um, on the bandsaw. Pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice cut there. Um, on the, as far as roughing this out, it's nice and hot. But we're gonna square it up here on the shaper.
sped up to 55 strokes a minute here. That puts us at around 70 surface feet a minute. Check our stroke, and we're not quite making it there. Same 55 strokes a minute at this longer stroke length. And we're hitting up about a this is about a hundred surface feet a minute. Same feed, 30 thousand. Speed it up to 66 strokes a minute. That's somewhere over. What have we got? That ought to be about 120 surface feet per minute. Which for a shaper, pretty good. But what else can we do? Let's really think about, see what else we got available here. This is 80. about 145 service feet per minute or so, 130 to 145, somewhere in there. I think that's as fast as that, well, we got one more. Let's see what we can do here. This is 116. Whoa, that's a little much. Back to 80. Before I set this machine off, I'm going to slow it down so I don't crank it back up at this speed. There we go. This is what you typically see on YouTube for shaper speeds right here. Alright, we got a drawing here. And um, we got our block. We're laying the uh, two holes out on the three and a half inch side. Right here, we're 0.85 up from the bottom edge. We we'll call this the bottom. And we're one and an eighth in from e each side in. So just roughly here. Uh, 
Um, Tom Lipton made a recent comment in one of his videos that he uh, doesn't really like Dicom all that much, but as his eyes get worse, um, as his eyesight goes away, as the natural progression of age, you need a little help. Well, Tom, buddy, right there with you. Let's let that dry. All right, you see I made a scribe mark here, 850 up. I'll show you how I did that. This is this is definitely not something you should do with with really precise work, right? I'm positioning. This is this is a a, a drill jig for um, for lag bolts in a porch, right? So where I put these holes is like personal discretion. You know, as long as it's on the block, we're, we're good. What I did was though, is I set my caliper to the dimension that I wanted. I took the block. Dropped it right here, left myself a little bit of an edge on the table. Took my caliper just like this. Using the table surface as a ref reference, run it on down, and there you go, it works great. Um, definitely not something that needs stepping over to the, uh, uh, stepping over to the surface plate. Then I can just do the same thing with the next dimension, which is one and an eighth. Again, plus or minus a tenth of an inch is fine here. Do the same thing. There you go. Our holes have been positioned. Let's take a center. Just lightly mark the length of aluminum just to give the drill tip something to grip. Now let's go set over, let's go set up over in the mill and let's drill all the way through with these two holes here. This is three quarters of an inch all the way through. <laughs> 